Baby Ray Vintage. Today's DIY is how to upholster an ottoman. We're going to be using this old crappy ottoman that I have here. I got it from my mother-in-law. I think she found it in a shed on her property. When I got the ottoman, it was like this. So if your ottoman already has fabric and batting on, you'll need to remove everything from it to get to this point. And we're actually going to have to be adding foam and batting to this because I didn't have any to start with. The very first thing that I'm going to do to get started is to take off the legs. We've got our legs off. I'm going to have Zeb spray these so that way they will match our fabric a little better. We're going to use fairy chalk on their paint in parchment. And if you'd like to purchase fairy chalk on their paint, you can go to jamierayvintage.com. So once those get done, the next thing we're going to be working on is finishing taking off the rest of our fabric. I think I'm going to use my scissors first and cut it down this way. And then that'll make it easier to get across. So I'm just going to take my needle and pliers. And I just like to do this with the piping because it kind of rips it off easier. And then just cut along the edge. I'm just going to keep doing that until it all comes off. Alright, so we've got all of our fabric removed and our staples that were loose out of our project here. So we're going to be adding our foam back. We just used some extra foam that we had from another project out of a cushion. And we had to cut it and then we used hot glue to seam it. Um, if you were doing this and you didn't have this, I would suggest just going to the craft store and getting foam and then cut it to fit with scissors. But in our case, we like to reuse stuff that we've got. So now we've got this on here, and then we're going to be adding batting. My favorite batting that I use is Heirloom Premium Batting. They sell it at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, any of those craft stores have it. I just like the way that it covers. I'm just going to lay this on here to kind of smooth out all of our edges. You don't want to just have foam or else it will be too harsh. I'm going to cut it to fit. So on the corners you're going to see we have this extra fabric and I don't want it to be bunchy. So I take and I cut straight down the middle on the corner up until I get to the corner. And then I'm going to cut off this triangle here and come down. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this piece off here. And I'm going to do that to all four corners so that way when the fabric comes, there's not any bunchy extra fabric here. Now comes my favorite part. We're going to be using our fabric to upholster our ottoman. So this fabric is Riley Bike fabric. It's awesome. It's super pretty. The color is like, it's really similar to Fairy Chalk Mother's Vintage Blue and Fresh Cream, two of my favorite colors, and it's upholstery fabric. So if you're interested in Riley Blake fabric, I got this fabric directly from them, but they also sell at retailers nationwide, and we will have the link to their website and their blog below. Not only do they have amazing fabric, but they also have great DIY projects on their blog as well, so be sure to check that out. So we're going to take our fabric. And I cut it to fit. I'm going to lay it on top and I'm going to find my pattern. Depending on what fabric you use, you're going to want to make sure that it's going the right direction, whichever way you want it to go. I want this design in the middle. So I'm going to find center here and make sure that it's where I want it. Nothing's worse than getting it all finished and realize that your fabric's crooked or you don't have the part of the design that you wish. And just making sure that there's about an equal amount on each side of this. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to get started stapling. I use an air compressed staple gun, but you could use a regular gun as well. I have arthritis, so air compressed is just easier for me, so that way I don't have to push so hard. It's connected to my air compressor. I think my staple gun was about 20 bucks at the hardware store, and the air compressor was about 130. We've got our PSI set at 40. You might have to test it out in a few different spots and see what PSI works best for your project, so make sure you test it out before you get started. So I always, when I do upholstery, 
I always go right to left and then back to front and I always start in the middle. So I'm gonna pull my fabric taut. You, want, you don't wanna pull it so tight that you're causing it to have um, ruffling on the edges. So just pull it nice and taut and staple it. About every half an inch to three quarters of an inch apart is how far apart you want your staples. While you're stapling, make sure that you're not having any bunching as you come across. on the opposite side and I'm going to flip it over and just make sure that I don't have any weird puckers or angles. So now I'm going to go ahead and staple this other side. Now I'm going to come in the top end and start in the middle and work my way across. Once I get to about an inch from the corner, I'm going to pull this fabric this way. Staple it, then pull this fabric up, folding it kind of like you would a present. If you notice when you do that that you get some bunchy fabric, it's okay to trim off what you don't need. Just be careful that you're trimming the right spot because that could be bad. I've got way too much fabric here and it's getting real bunchy on me. I'm going to take and fold this. Okay. So now I've got this the way that I want it. I've got a nice edge here and I'll show you how I fix that to keep it staying where it's supposed to. I'm going to staple that where I want it. So I'm going to do that exact process on the other corner and then around on the other side and then I'll flip it over and show you what the top looks Okay, so now that I've got all my edges done, I'm going to trim off my extra fabric. I obviously overdid it on the fabric, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much fabric than not enough. So I'm going to cut off along the edge about half an inch from the staples. So I've got all my extra off. I have one final step. I'm going to go ahead and put the dust cover on. This is Oli cloth. It's pretty inexpensive. It's about $1.50 a yard in the United States, so it's not super expensive. But this is what's going to finish it off, keep dust from going inside, and cover all your raw edges. So I'm just going to cut off how much I need here. What I like to do, hold my edge. Do just like I did before. I'm going to start in the middle and come across. You don't need as many staples, so about every inch and a half, two inches is sufficient. But when I get to this corner, I'm going to leave it because I've got to fold that edge under. Do the same thing on the other side. Fold this under. Okay, so we've got the underside done and we're just gonna finish off these seams. If you were an excellent seamstress, you could do a blind stitch here where you couldn't see it. I'm not an excellent seamstress, so I'm using my high temp hot glue. You want to make sure you're using high temp so that way it holds up. And I'm just going to run a bead of glue across here and pull my fabric over and hold it over. 
this will hold that seam in place and the fabric's not going to go anywhere because it's stapled underneath it's just more for looks to make it look a little bit more finished if you happen to get fat blue where you don't want it you can take a little piece of fabric put it over the top and get your iron and iron over the top and you can actually pull the hot glue off a little trick i learned once when i got hot glue where i didn't want it so i'm going to do that to all four corners and then when i get finished with that we'll come back and show you how to put the legs on all finished i love how it looks with this amazing fabric and cute painted feet Zeb added the feet and he went ahead and distressed them and sealed them so that way they're good to go. If you'd like to order fairy chalk mother paint, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. And if you're interested in this amazing fabric from Riley Blake, be sure to click the link below and check out their website and blog. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.